I'm Chris Carter. This is the Locked On Steelers podcast. Today, we'll get you ready for Friday Night Lights practice, but we got to go over how the defense is fighting back against the offense in Steelers practice, all here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show in your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. Make every moment more. FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus every single day. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started all right Steelers fans let's get into the, how the this week has gone so far so as we know there was a big fight on Wednesday there were a couple more skirmishes on Thursday I want to get into the intensity of that uh a little bit but we talked about that yesterday with Nick Faribault if you want more on what the big fight happened over and how they're going to go listen to that episode but I want to dive in on what I one thing I was really seeing in practice one I, I think the defense is kind has kind of been trying to pull the offense along, trying to pull the, 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 you know, the toughness out of the offense. But I also think the defense is kind of like reasserting like, oh, by the way, we are one of the better units in the NFL and we plan to be one of the best. And even in a day like Thursday, I saw that without the pads on, like they were just wearing shells, which is, you know, just helmets, uh, you know, you know, your shirts, your pants, like, you know, your, your, your normal non- you know, padded day of training camp. And uh, I saw I saw some really interesting stuff from, from several different guys, especially from Patrick Queen, who just, there were several times where I saw him just close ground so quickly. There was one time in particular where he tracked down Jalen Warren in space. It was a quick pass to him where he ran so quickly up on Jalen Warren. He, he thought Jalen Warren was going to keep running in a different direction and he would just not have to bump into him too hard. But Jalen Warren stopped just for a second. And by that time, Patrick Queen kind of got, he was like, wait a minute. And he kind of just ran right into him and tackled him and, you know, without pads. And it kind of sparked a little bit of controversy. Najee Harris was, was like, hey, you playing Blitz the League? What's going on here? But a, a funny moment there. But it, it's something that I continue to notice about Patrick Queen that I think is going to be a much bigger factor in the Steelers' defense than people realize. And it's something that I have not realized because I've been talking about it. When they got Patrick Queen, I said this, I was – I was in the AC in, in Washington, D.C., covering the ACC tournament when that announcement was made. I did an episode right on this show, and I was like, that is a huge deal. That's going to change everything. And I also said that about Peyton Wilson. This Steelers linebacking core is going to be a problem, not just because they can cover the pass, but because they're going to be such good run stuffers, which they have not had a company of good flying run stuffers who can also help against the pass. In a very long time. When I say a very long time, I don't just mean the last four or five years. It, it's really been since Ryan Shazier was with the Steelers that we saw even just one linebacker playing like that. And I think people underestimate the impact of what that can have in this entire defense, especially if this defensive line does take that step forward. If Keanu Benton's really good, even if Marvin Leal you know, is just takes some small steps forward uh, and, and Cam Hayward and Larry Ogunjobi are still there. I, I think this does have the potential to be an, an elite of the elite defense. And I say that, I mean, like they, they can be in that category. Number one. Now they still need a lot of other things to click. They still need to figure out what's going on at slot corner. We like what we're seeing out of BB B, B Bishop, Beanie Bishop. Uh, if you're, if you're at camp, um, I, I think Joey Porter Jr. and Dante Jackson have acquitted themselves well in camp, but you know, the Steelers also don't have the most, uh, the highest reputation of a complete receiver room right now. We'll get to more into who's, who's making progress for wide receiver two uh, later in the show. But, you know, between those guys, I, I think everything is kind of on the up and up for this defense that they are positioning themselves to be one of the best in the NFL. And Patrick Queen plays a big role in that. And I'm going to be really interested to see how things go and backs on backers tonight at Friday night lights practice, because we talked about this with, uh, with Alan Saunders after the first padded practice, when they did do uh, the um, uh, when they did do backs on backers and there was 
uh, you know, Patrick Queen didn't dominate in his drills. And there was a sense that was like he might have underestimated the intensity that was being that was being asked for in those drills. And I want to see how he bounces back, because as much as Patrick Queen needs to be fast and quick in space and also good in coverage, he needs to be able to help plug the run and be physical in doing so. And I've seen him do it in real life. That's why I've appreciated his his career, even, even with the Ravens. I think that if he shows that, that could go a long way. And, and again, if you have these these guys on defense at, at the linebacker position, flying around the field, making those run stuff, making it harder to make plays uh, in the air and in, in targeting those spots, that's going to be an asset the Steelers have not had at linebacker in, in a very long time. And that's going to make a big world of difference. And I, I really do think that there is um, that there is this there is this sense of the Steelers defense is going to be right there by this team, a sort of quiet confidence. And especially because I'm seeing a lot of practices now where now Mika Fitzpatrick has sat out two practices, but I don't think it's because Mika Fitzpatrick is like in some serious injury. Like he's right behind Terrell Austin. He's in Jersey. He was in a Jersey on Thursday. He was watching all the plays, all the stuff like he normally does. And TJ Watt also hasn't been highly involved in everything all the time. I think that the Steelers are kind of, letting some of the younger defenders get their get their kicks in you know show what they can do but when push comes to shove they're going to put the stars out there and this unit's going to be going to have the faster linebackers the young defensive linemen the the new corners um you know they're they're going to have you know all the pieces in play and i think this unit's going to come together quickly and it's going to be a much more dangerous defensive unit than i think that the you know, really anyone is really giving it credit for, credit for outside of those on the team. Uh, and again, Patrick Queen plays a big role in that. But I, I, again, just the more and more that I see at practice, and and this is also you know acknowledging that like, hey, I've been impressed with people on offense too. I think the offensive line has acquitted themselves well in these practices. I think that Justin Fields has acquitted himself well in these practices. I think that George Pickens is still George Pickens and ridiculous. I think that Najee Harris, Pat Frymuth, Darnell Washington. There's a lot of guys on offense too, but. I, I'm I'm getting this sense from the defense that's like you have you have not even seen what this defense can really be like, and I think there's going to be a depth to it. I think that you know if even if Peyton Wilson's not a starter by week one, I think that it, even if he's not a starter by week eight, if he's the first guy off the bench at linebacker and he's up, he's going to be such an asset and such a challenge for people to bring down. That's something that uh um, that I think should not be overlooked in what the Steelers are, are doing right now, because in the long run, uh, this team still needs to win with its defense as much as, you know, and not just with its defense, not only with its defense, because it's kind of what it's been for the past few years. Uh, but it, it, this is still a team that's going to lead with that unit, you know, limiting the chances of the opponent, giving up, you know, creating turnovers to give opportunities to the Steelers offense to score. Um, but I, I think that's, that's a big, that's a big thing. that's going to be a factor this year. And, you know, I know we're talking a lot about the offense and a lot about the quarterbacks in these practices, but I'm I'm saying in this episode to say, be ready for the defense to be a a serious playmaking unit because I think that they have all the pieces there for them. And there was one of those weaknesses on the defense that I've been telling y'all not to worry about that I think got solidified on Thursday. We'll talk about one of the free agent moves, and of course, that's getting Marcus Golden on the team. We'll talk about that and more here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. we still got a lot to discuss. But first, I remind you, this show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, that's what drives home or brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, from superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts of your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Bring your, keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers.
We're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue today's episode. Uh, we talked more about what we saw in the defense. Let's talk about what the defense is getting, and it's really getting a player back, and that's Marcus Golden, an, an, the edge rusher who came in last season and was was initially kind of like their thir- their first guy off the bench. I, I If you've been paying attention to this show, and I've talked about this a number of times before, people have called in on our call-in line. We're sorry we haven't done call-ins for a while. It's busy as heck with training camp and we got lots of clips and lots of things to get to so sometimes we can't get all the the calls done but um i people have been asking me like chris aren't they aren't they super thin at edge rusher and i'm like yeah they are right now they only got nick herbig as like a proven guy but i wasn't too worried i said this from the jump i, I totally saw a you know this is that they're going to take the first week or so of camp to figure out Oh, what about this guy we brought in off the you know off the street? What are the, this free agent you signed? What about this undrafted guy? They're going to take a look at all those guys, and if they don't feel like any of them could be the one, they're going to be like, "Hey, Marcus, what you what you up to?" That's exactly what happened. Now, um, I, I did think this might happen a little bit later, like maybe after, like maybe like right before the first preseason game. But either way, this was. I think always the plan for the Steelers and always the plan for Marcus Golden. Cause again, Marcus Golden's in his thirties. Marcus Golden ain't trying to come to training camp and, and be there all summer long. He knows what new it's needed of him. And also like, it's even more so that he knows what's needed of him because this year he's he, after that last year, he's coming back from being with the team. But this is a move that I think will only benefit the Steelers. It'll give them that full platoon of four edge rushers that they can rotate between TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, Nick Herbing, and now Marcus Golden. And they can still add a fifth if they wanted to, or one of the other linebackers can line up there. But uh, again, I, I thought this was maybe not a foregone conclusion, but a very side, a very good hunch. that This was probably going to happen at some point. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's good for the Steelers that it did, because now again, you're, you have depth at that position. And, and honestly, to me, roster wise, as far as, you know, the, the names on paper and how guys look going into the season, that was one of the last two things that I think this defense was missing. The only other thing is a slot corner who's proven. And, and that's not to say that I don't think Beanie Bishop could be that guy or Cam Sutton will eventually be that guy or anything like that. But I think it's still a question mark. It's it's still something that isn't proven until you see it in games. And, and I mean, games with an S because it's not just one game to prove it. But I think that there's a potential that they could, could have that answer in some of the guys that are on their roster. But uh, again, Marcus Golden bringing in, he's that answer. Uh, and I, I fully anticipate for him to kind of be in the, just, just that second rotation. Herbig might even get the snaps before him because Herbig is doing some nasty stuff in camp. Like he is still lightning quick, getting off the ball, making guys miss, using moves that are keeping people off guard. Um, now you're bringing back Golden, who knows that, who knows the defense, uh, you know, knows, knows his role, knows his responsibility. He's going to go out there and do his thing. And he's also going to be, you know, another, another positive veteran in the locker room. That's one thing that we saw from him to last year uh, was that, you know, he was just another positive presence to kind of keep po- things pointed in the right direction. So good on Omar Khan and the Steelers for going and getting a guy like that. I think that it was important to get him. And I don't think he felt any to which way about not having to uh, do the first week of training camp or so, because Marcus Golden's done already done his fair share of training camps. Uh, but that being said, I want to tap back into the intensity part of things because I brought this up on the the Thursday episode because I, I did think that it was important to talk about it when I wasn't there and I, I, I practiced to see the big fight that everyone was talking about. And you saw you could see clips of it posted on Twitter. But there was another skirmish. And I'd say skirmish is, you know, uh, it's, it's a, it was a, it was a light fight that happened on uh, on Thursday um, at, at Steelers training camp. And again, the pads weren't on things like that. But. I, I want to reiterate to those out there who there's some people out there who think that this is unheard of. It's not every team pretty much has a fight in camp, multiple fights in camp. Cam Hayward admitted after years of doing it, that he intentionally would pick on a rookie every single year to try to see what it would take to get them to fight him. And like, that was just how they, they tested guys. That was just like a rite of passage that they did. And, and so it's, it's not that big a deal that they're doing it, but I do think that, it could lead to something very interesting in the coming weeks. Now, you know, there's always that inter, inter intra squad uh, competition, right? Everyone wants to prove that their unit's the best, their team's the best, their, their everything's the best. And the offense, I, I do think, has taken a bit of pride in the fact that they were able to win the first day in pads and were able to have been able to have success. I mean, and also they went, I think, it was three days in a row that they won uh, seven shots, which hadn't happened. Uh, in a while. And so uh, until Thursday, Thursday, that, that streak ended. Um, 
the defense was able to win seven shots, five to two. But, you know, this is an offense that's still trying to figure out where guys are going to live on the offensive line. This is an offense that still hasn't really seen its start. The guy who's supposed to be the number one quarterback on the team and Russell Wilson, you know, be at full strength and be there for full 11 on 11. Uh, this is still an offense that's trying to figure out who their wide receiver two is, who we're going to get to in a bit uh, on, on what we're seeing there. But despite all those things, they're they're out there competing with, again, a defense that I think will be one of the best, if not the best in the NFL this year. Um, and I can't help but think that it, it's kind of a good thing that they're, that, that you're seeing some of that. Um, you know, and, and some of it's just natural provocation from either side, just trying to get – you know, get a response out, 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 out of guys uh, or just, you know, one side, you know, taking a little bit more of offense to something on the field than what maybe, you know, maybe it should have been based off of, uh, you know, how things have been flowing. Like, for example, I talked about the Patrick Queen play where he kind of like over pursued Jalen Warren and he he thought Jalen Warren was going to keep running and, and he, he stopped and he ran right into him and tackled him. And Najee Harris expressed that. Well, there, there were a few plays like that. There was another play where I think it was Miles Killebrew took somebody out of that somebody out it might have been uh perrine uh and, and when doing so um you know he kind of put his hands up but there was a lot of complaining from the offensive side of the ball that was like hey what the heck is up with that and Najee Harris at one point I heard him say something to the effect of like like hey where was this when the pads were on and kind of mocking the defense for saying like hey by the way you know I know that you're hitting us and everything while the pads aren't on but when the pads were on we were kicking y'all's butt it, it's those friendly competitions that can be really that can bring out good things out of teams. And I, I've talked enough about that. I don't want to delve too much into all, all, all this stuff there. But again, that competition does help. It, it, it's something that I've seen manifest in different ways over the years. Um, you know, the way that they celebrate. And, and this is this is part of it. But um, I, I do think that the Steelers, it is part of the plan right now as they're trying to be the bullies to keep pushing those buttons to keep seeing where these guys will go and what these guys will do. Um, but uh, the the defense being able to stuff the run is going to be huge. The offense being able to run the ball is going to be huge. And, and it's another reason why I think that they're just excited for the opportunity to eventually do some inter-squad things uh, where they, they play other teams. Um, so, you know, I'm seeing that, but again, I think a lot of the poking and prodding it's happening from the defense because they want to see this offense mature into that. And I think it's been part of the, 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 the plan there as far as how practices has gone. And again, Friday night lights don't expect anything to change. I think it's going to be just as nasty. I think it's going to be maybe even a little bit more. Um, and I'm excited to, to, to do it now again. Uh, you can tune in if you if you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and all those different places uh, at Carter Critiques. You'll see me um, uh, post my my minute long reaction of like what he saw there. And I think it's actually YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, not not Twitter and Instagram that you can follow those videos on there. But um, but again, I I really do think that there's something there's something brewing there, and I'm in, intrigued to see what happens with that physicality when the pads go back on Friday night and it's Friday night lights and everyone's putting on a show. There there'll be some interesting trash talk that happens. But I also want to talk to you about some of the things that they're still do trying to do on offense, and that's secure who is wide receiver too. I think there were some you know some things that happened that kind of, that might have impacted that competition. We'll talk about that next here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host Chris Carter. Stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I remind you this show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. I love sports and there's plenty of action going on right now and you can take advantage of all of that action at fanduel.com or on the FanDuel app that you can download right to your phone. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't miss out on anything either because FanDuel is going to help you get in on all the, all the best bets out there, whether it's on Major League Baseball, whether it's on the big fights that are, that are happening, or whether it's in the Olympics right now where, you, where you're seeing a lot of great competition go, go to work. All I have to do is open the, 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 the FanDuel app on my phone, and I can start dreaming up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And all summer long, FanDuel is hooking up all their customers with a boost or a bonus every single day. That's right. You don't have to be a new customer. You don't have to be an existing customer. You just need to be a customer and go into FanDuel, and you can get your daily bonus. So head over to FanDuel.com right now and start making the most out of your summer. That's FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of Major League Baseball. We're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our conversations here 
on the Locked On Steelers podcast on the Friday episode. And again, Friday Night Lights are about to happen. But we're seeing different things from different wide receivers as far as those who are trying to be wide receiver too. Again, George Pickens is wide receiver one. There's no question about it. But um, Van Jefferson was one of the stars of Thursday's practice, and he was doing well in, in seven shots. He was able to catch a deep pass. Um, he's a guy who he has that veteran ability to be able to process what's needed to – um, to, to get open and to work within a system. And I think that that's all he wants right now is that where he doesn't have to dominate everything that he's around. Um, he doesn't have to be the, the guy that gets, you know, X amount of targets or he's going to, or he's going to walk. I think that's where fan Jefferson has it there, but I'll also say Calvin Austin, especially in the one-on-ones has looked really sharp. He, he, his routes are getting better. He's getting quicker into what he has to do. Um, I think there's a lot of really positive things that are coming from him there, but, I think the thing is, is that those are really the only two guys that fit into that conversation. Now, again, maybe Roman Wilson would have because he was playing pretty well before he got injured. Uh, but Calvin Austin, Van Jefferson, to me, they kind of look like the, the, the battles for wide receiver too. Now, will that be enough? That's a good question um, because, uh, you know, this is a, as we talked with Matt Williamson from Steeler Nation Radio on the show back on, I think that was our Monday or Tuesday episode. Um, but I think it was our Tuesday episode when we had him on the show. He talked about like, Hey, like in today's NFL, you do kind of want that extra person. Um, and I, I think that that's where, uh, that's where the Steelers do might get into some wide receiver two potential talks in the, in the, in the future, as far as adding a, um, a, uh, you know, adding us, adding, adding, you know, a new, a, a new person to that, to that mix there. I do think that there's going to be some potential, still trades on the on the the market there the sealers do take a look at if things don't go their way now I, I'll, I'll preface that with this though i still think that people who are calling for the biggest trades in this conversation you know might be tripping i still don't know if it's brandon Ayuk, but i know there's a lot of people pointing to brandon Ayuk because you know in, in a, on a day where there was a video that surfaced of him looked like he was saying his goodbyes in san francisco he also liked the tweet uh from from uh uh, Brandon Ayuk, that is, like the tweet from Mike Tomlin when he was showing off his Air Forces. Um, and so everyone's like, oh, that obviously means Brandon Ayuk's coming. And look, I'm not saying Brandon Ayuk ain't coming. I'm just saying those aren't the things that I look for to define uh, whether it's actually, something's actually going to happen or not there. Uh, but again, I, dipping back into this wide receiver conversation, I, I do think that if you're if you're the Steelers right now, you might have another week or so, maybe that first preseason game to see how these wide receivers work in this offense. Cause that's also part of this is you're testing out the offense. But I think if you're able to see that the, that these guys aren't, you know, no one's going to step up and become that consistent playmaker that can take away attention from George Pickens. Then I do think you might need to evaluate how you want to go about finding uh, that, that, that person um, or that player, because, I think there's potential there, there, but I think you got to unlock that potential. And that's going to be why that's why I think it's very exciting to talk to Zach Azani right now, the Steelers wide receivers coach, because he's been very responsible for uh, what this, what this team has done with the, the attitude that you're seeing from, from the wide receivers, the, Hey, I didn't do everything right. I need to be to make sure I go do it right. I think those are all really good things that you're seeing there uh, from, from these Steelers. Uh, but again, when it comes to the trade market, it's tough to say with all the, the options that are that are out there, but I think that the Steelers are still going to give it a little bit more time to figure out what they have to do to, to or, or not what they have to do, excuse me, but who or do they really have that can fit that wide receiver two role? Because as much as Arthur Smith's going to want to run the ball and use use his tight ends, wide receiver two is still in a very important position, and that's why I think that if you're not watching for the linemen, if you're not watching for the backs on backers, if you're going to Friday night's practice, also if you're going to Friday night lights practice, just just shout me out. I I always try to say hi to fans who say what's up, uh, and I appreciate everyone who does do that because it's always great to hear fans of the show. Uh, and, and hear that you're, you know, that I'm seeing you out in the real world. So that's, that's, it's really, it's really cool to see that. Um, but again, you know, while linemen are hitting, while backs on backers are hitting, keep an eye on those receivers um, and DBs and, and where, and where guys are. I think that there's going to be some very interesting conversations around how the Steelers address wide receiver two in the very near future. So all that being said, uh, I'm making this a shorter episode because your boy's been 
all over the place. I've been uh, at pit. I've been at pit football, Steelers football, pit basketball. I'm back at pit football in the morning. Uh, if you're listening to this in the morning, I'm probably at pit pit football's training camp. And then I got to get the Friday night lights. But we'll have you covered all weekend long. I'll be giving you my daily practice reports from Steelers training camp. We thank you for tuning into the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, post gazettecom and find me here on the Locked On Steelers podcast every day, Monday through Friday, breaking down your Pittsburgh Steelers. See you here for all your weekend updates on the on the YouTube channel here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.